Hello everyone, I am one of the most important singers uh, that I have the chance to interview in my life. Uh, he's British, but he made it in the whole world. It's John Waite. Hi, Hi there, nice to see you. How are you doing? <laughs> nice to see you. Every time that I hear your, your accent, it's, it's awesome because I used to, I mean, living here in, in America, yeah. and it's, it's, it's not often that I, I, oh, I really, hear yeah. British accent. Yeah, I've, I kept my accent all these years. It seems I go home quite a lot. Oh, yeah? I, go, I don't just spend all my time in America. I go home to England quite a lot and spend, spend time in my hometown. So I think I never really lost my accent, you know. It's, it's part of you. Uh, well, yeah. I mean, if you lost it, it probably is because probably you know, per sound personality. Like Cary Grant or something, you know. <laughs> I don't know what I do. <laughs> <laughs> well, they say the same to me, okay? I have a strong accent. Is it from Argentina? Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, I saw this when I was coming. Yeah. It's about. Tell me about this, okay? Uh, there's just some fans out there that are, are trying to get me into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, and they're signing a petition. Mm -hmm. And um, you can't really argue with that kind of love you know if they think you're that good um i mean a ton of people have been signing it so um it's just great you know you, you never know it might work you know okay usually do you get involved with a charity or or this kind of thing um well i try to do what i can i mean that we did a, a series of concerts a few years ago for the shared tree women's shelter in um in las vegas we'd go back every year and raise Uh, more money if you did a concert in the um, House of Blues. And in the end, we ended up, uh, I think the whole thing came to about a quarter of a million dollars. Whoa. But uh, it's a small thing to do. And uh, if I get asked to do stuff, I try to do it. Um, I just think it's, uh, it's a great way to help out if you can. And there are a lot of causes that need help, especially with the economy being bad. Yeah, yeah. And it's nothing for me to go and sing somewhere. Uh, it's a joy, you know. So, I mean, uh, I try to do what I can, yeah. Well, I will support you so you can support others. Yeah, right? thank you. Yeah, no, it's, it's a good thing. I gotta, I gotta pay the rent at the end of the month. Probably well, we you can pay the rent. <laughs> <laughs> rent? Yeah. <coughs> okay, uh, when I was coming all the way from Hollywood, I was listening to uh, Rough and Tumble mm. uh, again because I have it uh, for at least a year and a half. Yeah. And I couldn't skip the w the, the, the song Skyward. It's, yeah. my, it's my favorite. Thank Tell you. me about it. Skyward, yeah. Well, I, I wrote that um, uh, with a friend of mine, um, Jamie Houston, about six years ago. And uh, when I was looking around for songs to finish Rough and Tumble, I, I couldn't find enough songs to finish. And I was in, in my kitchen in Santa Monica thinking, what am I going to do, you know? I did the Tina Turner song. I wrote that down, Tina Turner, Sweet Red Allen Red, and a song called Hanging Tree. And then I ran out of ideas. And the phone rang, and it was Jamie Houston saying somebody was going to cover Skywood. Did I object? And I said, I couldn't even remember the song. Can you send me it? And he sent me a copy of Skywood. And it was like listening to somebody else sing because I'd completely forgotten the song. And um, so I just put it on the album. It was just it was just like a case of great, another song. You know, I was so pushed for material. But um, one of those songs, it started off being called Skyway, uh, about a girl that was um, get, getting drugged out. And it was about the Skyway, you know, like being high. And um, But it seemed more of a a really brilliant sunshine kind of song to to be happy you know and uh, it's yeah, yeah it's inspiring yeah it's very up and it's it's basically written sort of about the west side of new york city walking down columbus avenue it's just about a, a tremendous spring morning and everything's all right you know it's, it's uh it's a uh, it, we're going to re-release it actually it's, we're going to put that track at the end of the live album that's yeah, coming out so in wikipedia the two songs that i use as a as a a promotion wasn't neither uh, Skyward or Rough and Tumble. They bought the two that I really wanted. I mean, yeah. really like it. It was a strange. Uh, we, the record company released Rough and Tumble as a single, and it went to number one on Classic Rock Radio, which surprised yeah. everybody. We didn't expect anything like that to happen. We thought it was going to be uh, If You Ever Get Lonely. We convinced that was going to be a big song. And um, they didn't release it. And then they kind of ran out of steam. And. Um, I bought the album back from the record company and we just put it back out and toured behind it. Um, but like I said, with this live album that's coming out, we have, yeah. eight, we have eight songs on the record that are live. And then we're putting 
uh, if you ever get lonely on there and Skywood. Mm-hmm. And we're going to re-release them on Sony. So um, will be all, all your solo music, or you will, you will include from your other? Uh, well, no. It's it seems to be. I haven't actually looked, but uh, I I know, I know there's no baby stuff, and I know there's no bad English. It must be, but it, it wasn't intentional. It was just that uh, the best songs uh, made it onto the album. We we did a two night stand uh, in Philadelphia at Philly Sound and invited had a free concert. And bought like five kegs of beer, and invited all the people. Dingy bar. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it was great. We had a packed house two nights, and we we played this set, and we recorded it completely. And then we went to we took a couple of months off, went to Manchester, New Hampshire, and recorded a show about a month ago, and that was really good. And uh, I've been mixing ever since, and we mastered it like four days ago. So it's uh, just about ready to go. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. You play. I mean, this in the in the album was uh, Jennifer Page. How was the the the, the situation that you, you got in in the album? Uh, well, she was local. Uh, we, we made six songs or five songs in in Nashville, Nashville. Tennis, Tennessee, yeah. working with Kyle Cook, uh, and Kyle, I think, knew, or David Thorner knew, uh, Jennifer. I think he'd he'd had something to do with the production of Crush. Yeah, right. And I, I like that song myself, you know. And she was living around the corner, so we needed a female to come in and sing. And um, and it was great, you know. She was she was really easy to work with and a great voice, you know. Nice, nice. Um, d- you you talking about uh, a uh, live album? There's any old material you have from from babies or or a bad English that wasn't ever released? Oh yeah. In the past? There's a load, there's a load of bad English stuff because when we made the second album, the producer didn't like what we'd written. We didn't really know that he was going to be like that. So we were about 10 days into the record and he just didn't like anything. And we'd written maybe 10 songs to, to get us into the record. And then we're going to like look at it and then write a couple more to go with it. But it, it hit the wall. So there's all these demos and all these songs uh, floating around. Uh, that never got used. So yeah. it's possible someday that it could be they could be the light. Well, you know, I mean, there were different kind of demos. I mean, some of them were made in tiny rooms, some of them were made in in recording studios. But the quality difference differs all the time. They are re recorded, right? Yeah. Good, yeah. Good, good to know. I mean, uh, someday I will visit you and, yeah, and well, check no, it out. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> If you go on the internet, I think you can find them on the internet. Like oh yeah, boot- bootlegs. Yeah, oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, I, I don't consume anything that is not released by by the artists. Uh, really? Yeah, no, I support the the, okay, the market. Well, thank you. Um, yeah. What it was the the part of your career that you enjoy most? I mean, I'm not talking about exactly a band, but it's some period of your solo career, band. Right. Well. It's all been, there's all been, I mean, when I first got to New York City and I was first solo, just being in New York City and having that experience and, and working with Ivan Kroll, who'd worked with Patti Smith and Iggy Pop, me and Ivan really started a band and made that first solo record. And I was living off next to nothing in a small, tiny uh, bedsit apartment, you know, with a mattress on the floor. And it was it was really New York, and I was like that for two years, and I really really enjoyed that because it was just felt like being dropped from outer space. New York City was just, and I fell in love with it. I remember yeah, the because mo- you moved there. So yeah, but I, I remember the, yeah I remember the moment I fell in love with it. I was sat in a Chinese restaurant on Columbus Avenue, and I thought, God, I love this place. And it'd been kind of in- intimidating up to that point, but I mean, I'd never really. I mean, I'd spent most of my life there. I moved to Santa Monica now, but. Uh, Why? Why we? Uh, because it, because it was so interesting living in New York City, and it was so distracting that I wasn't really making a lot of work. I was doing work in, in like bursts, and then I would just be sitting there. You know, it's um, doing nothing. Doing nothing. But but since I came to California, I've been working a lot, and I've been going on the road much much more, and touring quite heavily so it seems to be a good balance you know well the weather is better here well the weather's nice I live you know Santa Monica weather's great because it's, it's cool and it's breezy and you get rain and stuff but LA itself is too hot for me you know I like cooler weather you know talking about about the the bands are you in touch with any of the, your former members I don't really see them I mean uh, the other day I was in a recording studio uh, mastering the live album and Tony Brock 
the drummer from the babies had been in the day before to look at a drum kit and he'd, he'd call me up about two years ago and we'd talk and we'd, it was friendly, you know, it's nice. But we don't really see each other. I think when, you, uh, when a band breaks up, a lot of the times it's like being divorced. You know, you really, uh, it's difficult. It's not like uh, if, you, if it's your brother, you know, then because I think not all the times the band is, is, is made by people that has a relationship, no. a personal relationship right. other than, yeah. you know. Yeah, it can be difficult because uh, if, if somebody's uh, adversarial or the, the competitive and they can't help being competitive, it just gets on your nerves after a while. I mean, I, I'm pretty easy going, but um, everybody has their reasons to do what they do. And I think it's just easier for me to, to live my life as a solo artist. I get the work done that I want to get done. I don't really like compromising when I'm songwriting. You know, I, I like to go right for it. And sometimes it's super dark. And I don't think you can be super dark in a band. A band is more happy. And the message is more of a band message. Solo music is usually much more uh, interesting because it's more personal. So you never come into it never come into your mind to to reunite no, at all? No, I wouldn't do it. I think I think once you decide to move on, I think it's like I mean, if you got divorced, you wouldn't be thinking, you know, it's been ten years, let's get married again. You wouldn't do it. You yeah, know? right. So unless you say the sex is very good, but, the but it's very, about about the woman. <laughs> 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 yeah, no, okay. Wow. <laughs> Yeah, that was it's, good. it's a good like comparison. That. That but it's good. <laughs> I like that. No, it's very good. You play with Ringo Starr, yeah. All Star Band. How was the experience? It was fun. I mean, it, it was it was a little strange playing with uh, uh, strangers because nobody knew anybody. Uh, Ringo was just the focal point. We all had our own hits and we played, but I never met those people before. Uh, and you play with the yeah. huge and names. You, you, you just you just walk in and, and start rehearsing, and then it's and like it's a dynamic. And like I said about bands, you know, people are very competitive sometimes. Some people are very easygoing, but everybody has their own kind of velocity. And when you put people mm, together, yeah. it's it either works or it doesn't. And sometimes you have to be really polite and and listen more and be kind. Well, you are British. Polite is your oh, second name, right? Is, no, well, I, I, I am, mean, you are known I, as a polite. No, no, right? I, no, I am pretty polite. <laughs> but, it, but like that, you know, I mean, like being in a band is like that. You have to be sympathetic and you have to have a heart. You can't just, like, do what you want to do. You have to listen more. So, But it was fun playing with Ringo. I mean, it, to play with the Beatle, I would have done it for free, really. Yeah, right. It paid me a lot of money, but it, I, I, it was one of those things that to play with the Beatle before... Well, probably and if you say them that you will do it for free, they won't pay you anything, right? That's right. They would probably... <laughs> now you can say it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Ringo, yeah. How will be your super group? How will be the ones with the, the big names that you would like to play in the same band? Well, when I was a kid, you know, you see yourself like with Free. You, you think, God, Free are great. But Paul Rogers was tremendous with Free. You take Paul out of Free and it wouldn't have been Free. So I've never really thought that I could step into another band and take somebody's place. But there was people like Steve Marriott, uh, who was just an incredible guitar player and a singer. But I was just a huge fan of those people. But whether I saw myself stepping into somebody's shoes, I never, I never did that. I always knew that whatever it is that I do, it's uh, unique to me. And that's the strength of it. And I don't compete. Yeah, no, no, but let's say you have the chance to call two or three guys that you yeah. really love, you think they are genius. Right. What would be them? Who would be them? Oh, I don't know about that. I think it would probably be a bluegrass thing or a country thing. I think I could get involved with that. I mean, if I made a bluegrass album, I would call Larry Sparks up, the tremendous guitar player, bluegrass singer. And The name is again? Uh, Larry Sparks. He's really good. And the Del McCurry band... That's Del and his, his sons, Del McCurry. He's a, a genius too. But that kind of uh, American, Americana, they call it, or bluegrass, that's fascinating to me. But rock, it's, it's, I think rock is, uh, I don't know, you have to take rock as being a very classic thing now. It's, uh, and new avenues can only open up by trying different kinds of music. What is your favorite singer? 
Favourite singer, Alison Krauss, is very, very good. Uh, Paul Rogers is very, very good. Rod you Stewart, Robert Plant. There's a lot of really good singers. There's a couple of songs in the last album that sounds to me like Rod Stewart. Like really? Scott actually is his song. Well, you know, I mean, Rod, Rod was influenced. Uh, I mean, I'm sure that, you, don't, you just don't know. I mean, it, he was a tremendous influence on everybody. Free said that they were trying to sound like the Jeff Beck group. You know, mm -hmm. and uh, Robert Plant said that he was incredibly influenced by by Steve Marriott, because uh, Steve Marriott had this song called "You Need Loving," which was a Howling Wolf song, which they turned into a whole lot of love. You know, it was that close. So singers generally are influenced by each other, and a certain specific kind of music, like phrasing, is supremely important. Mick Jagger, I think, was a huge influence on Rod Stewart. His phrasing is identical, and uh, you can. You, another singer, if, uh, all the singers know who the other guy listens to. You can just tell. It takes like eight bars, and I know exactly where they're going to go next. How's that? That's pretty. That's pretty. Yeah. Serious. Yeah. 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 Any plans to? This is for mostly Argentina, Brazil, South America. Oh, we'd love to. If, if somebody would offer us a tour down there, we are actually looking at playing in South America. Uh, there was a tour, there was a gig last year that we almost came to play, and it, and it wires got crossed and we didn't go. Uh, so I, I have a new manager that's extremely interested in putting me into these different uh, countries. So if you take me with you as a tour manager, I will take you anywhere. Really? Okay, yeah. And we will split the girls. Okay. <laughs> five for you, five for me. Well, you're quite a boy. Aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> That's great. No, I'd love to see South America. Oh, man. Have you been there before? Never. I, I've been to Panama. We played Panama. Panama? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But that's not really South America. That's just Central the, America. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's yeah. kind of like, no, you if know. You go, if you go to Brazil, Argentina. Really? All the countries. I yeah, know. Yeah, I, heard it's, I heard it's beautiful. And the food. Yeah. It's the, it's the kind of places that not only you go for just to know the places. Yeah. Uh, you can eat anywhere probably and it will be Excellent. Well, yeah, I've heard it's very, very good. Yeah. Well, I will, I will try to to do something. Okay. Uh, anything else? I, I know you're gonna play with Survivor. Uh, when you play in 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 LA, uh, there's somebody. Do you, sometimes do you have a guest, or, or or usually you play solo? Or no, I do, it's, it's I have my band, and um, we keep it pretty low key. I mean, I don't really exist in the music business like you might think. I. I I function in a in a in a way that I just go with my band and we play, and sometimes we play tiny places and do do like acoustic music, and sometimes we play much much bigger places and it's a full electric show. Mm -hmm. But uh, I I kind of choose where I want to play. I don't just go on tour, and um, I mean, in fact, last year generated a huge amount of cash last year, but I paid it all in tax because. Uh, you can't do the touring that I, I like to do. I like to do smaller, out-of-the-way places and play to smaller groups of people. It's just more interesting. But I love the big things too, but it, it becomes kind of empty. The bigger places become kind of empty. Mm -hmm. So I do enjoy just keeping it under control. You know, I can make the kind of records I want to make. It isn't huge business, but it's big business because of you know, Missing You and some of the big hits with mm. the babies. But By I'll the way, when I listened Missing You the first time when I was a kid, yeah. I thought you were a Tina Turner. I'm sorry. Really? Yeah. Well, that's a compliment. Yeah, yeah, obviously. You mentioned Tina Turner. Are you Buddhist? Yeah, no. Well, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, if I have a religion, it's, it's, it's probably more Buddhist than anything else, but uh, all the religions influence me, you know. I'm your Horenge Gyo. It's a, it's a uh, chanting. Really? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Tina Namaste. Tana, you, Namaste. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, John. Yeah. Thank you, man, for, for the no, interview. No, I enjoyed talking to you. There's anything else you want to say? Probably something I missed. Well, you know, look out for the live album. It should be out by the summer. Yeah. Uh, we're re releasing Skyward and we're really re releasing uh, If You Ever Get Lonely. And it's a ripping live really extreme live records so i hope you like it it's three piece band no keyboards just really rock so i hope you like it that's it bye 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 <laughs> okay that's a great little camera